Hello and welcome as we once again try to worship our Lord in these very unusual circumstances. Um, this Sunday, I'm uh, this Sunday. I'm actually coming to you from Saturday night. Our setting is a little different, and I hope it adds to your enjoyment. Before I begin, I have some good news that relates to a mistake I made in my prayer last week, in which I, I mentioned the death of Linda Ernst. Well, thanks be to God. As Mark Twain would say, I was both premature and greatly exaggerating. Linda is still with us. She had gone to the hospital. So we'll raise Linda's name in prayer today, along with a few others, but be grateful that she is still indeed among the living. And let me call us to this time of listening for what God might be trying to say to us as I read from today's lectionary New Testament reading that is found in the book we know as the Acts of the Apostles, or more simply, Acts. This is from chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed them in a loud voice, Men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, make no mistake about this, but listen carefully to what I say. And then a few verses later, listen to what I'm going to say. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commanded to you by God by the miracles and portents and signs that God worked through him when he was among you. As you know, this man who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified and killed by men outside the law. But God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades, for it was impossible for him to be held in its power, since, as David says of him, I kept the Lord before my sight always, for with him at my right hand nothing can shake me. So my heart rejoiced, my tongue delighted, my body too will rest secure, for you will not abandon me to Hades or allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have taught me the way of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne, he spoke with foreknowledge about the resurrection of the Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades and whose body did not see corruption. God raised this man, Jesus, to life. And of that, we are all witnesses. And of that raised this man to life, we read today's lectionary gospel lesson from the gospel according to John, the, I hope, familiar story of Thomas the Doubter. But before I begin reading that, on Easter morning, we had an option of two different versions of the gospel story. We had the, uh, of Jesus' resurrection. We had that which we read from the gospel according to Matthew, this year's lectionary gospel. And we had a, a more or less parallel passage from the gospel according to John, which has this statement in the garden outside the tomb where Jesus has encountered the two, the risen Jesus has encountered the two women. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me. Some translations say, do not cling to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. In other words, we encounter in John the suggestion that something was different about the form of Jesus following his resurrection. Something that we will want to note if we listen carefully to how Jesus suddenly appears in the room in which today's reading is set. Today's reading is from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Words of the good news of the gospel. Thanks be to God. And we allow me in my normal brief prayer, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth, but far more importantly, the meditations of each of those who hears them be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, with all that is going on in the world, and, and in several cases of which I am aware in your individual lives, I'm quite aware that no one is going to feel sympathy for me on the Sundays of the period that begins today, the seven Sundays between Easter and Pentecost, what are called in the church calendar the Sundays of or after Easter. Um, were we in our regular churches today, we would see white, the pyramids on the, on the table or on the pulpit or lectern, the color of, of Easter. On Pentecost, which this year is on May 31st, such that maybe we will be back worshiping together, for that one day of the year, the collar is red to represent the flames on the, on the tongues. And Pentecost is one of my favorite days of the year. This year, it's May 31st. Maybe we'll be back together. But as to why you should feel sorry, for, feel sorry for me, well, in the simplest terms, it is because for the seven Sundays after Easter, the Revised Common Lectionary, the, the three-year cycle of scripture readings that I use both as a pastor for our readings and worship and to which I turn to find inspiration, I hope, for the messages I seek to give, well, they depart from that three-year cycle in these seven Sundays, and each year use the same gospel readings. Each year, the same gospel readings. And to add to that, during the seven-week seven period, we do not have a Hebrew Bible or Old Testament reading, um, but rather readings from the book of the Apostles, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, which we know better simply as Acts. And the challenge to me is that when we have these overly familiar uh, gospel readings, like perhaps today's Doubting Thomas, I have to scrounge to try to find something new to say. And so today we are again dealing with the Acts of the Apostles. We do that several Sundays after Easter. Easter, most likely, Last Sunday was as unusual an Easter as you have ever experienced. It was pretty much that for me. Normally on Easter morning, I arise at 4 o'clock because I do three worship services, the earliest of which is the 6 a.m. sunrise service up in the Memorial Garden in Florence. And normally after the third worship service, I am sufficiently exhausted that I return home and later in the afternoon, Patricia and I go out to a restaurant for a nice Easter dinner. But of course, last Sunday, there were no regular worship services and the restaurants were closed. So what we did was we ordered out for later pickup and then sat down to watch a movie that I thought was very appropriate for Easter Sunday. The movie was The Robe. Many of you will remember The Robe. The Robe was a was the first movie made in CinemaScope when, when cameras went from 35 millimeters to like 70 millimeter wide uh, film frame. The Robe was based on a novel by Lloyd C. Douglas. And the robe refers to the robe Jesus wore as he ascended up Golgotha 
It was the robe on which the Bible tells us the Roman soldiers gambled and the winner, if you will, got the robe. Uh, the story is about the lieutenant in the Roman army who led the, the soldiers that crucified Jesus and of his love interest and of how he eventually and with her become believers in Jesus. Um, the lieutenant was played by a very young Richard Burton. His love interest was played by Gene Simmons, who years later, uh, in one of my favorite movies, Spartacus, played Spartacus's wife and became one of my favorites. But in the robe, the lieutenant and his love declare their faith and that they will worship Jesus and will not worship the emperor Caligula. And as the movie ends, they're going off knowing they will be executed for their choice. I didn't see the robe when it first came out. I read the novel, I believe when I was in high school and later saw the movie. But there was a third character in the robe and a sequel that came out not too many months after the robe called Demetrius and the Gladiators. And I did see that movie when it came out. Victor Mature, uh, who played Demetrius in the robe, played Demetrius and Demetrius and the Gladiators. And while I don't remember much about the movie, what I do remember is Roman soldiers and swords. And so a few years after that, when I began my reading through the entire Bible for the first time, I was looking forward to the book of Acts because I thought I would read about Roman soldiers and swords. Uh, but I was disappointed. While there are Roman soldiers in the book of Acts, and that it does include a little bit about persecution. Um, we have the stoning of Stephen, the martyr Stephen, that I told you I, I remember from fourth grade already. Um, most of Acts is about the early church, the larger part about the travails and travels of Paul, who wrote more of the New Testament than anyone else. So, the book of Acts, in that sense, was a disappointment. And yet, we can learn something from the book of Acts. For the early Christian church, the church in which Demetrius, if you will, was, was a member before Caligula has him made a gladiator, why well, these were small groups that met in individual homes where they would hear about Jesus perhaps have read to them a letter from Paul, would celebrate the Lord's Supper. And we know these things actually from Paul's letters. The early Christians met in homes. It seems amazingly prescient for us in 2020 to think about those early Christians. It wasn't so much that they met in homes and that right now we are confined pretty much to our homes, even though it's, it's at least quasi-voluntarily. And we're not really worshiping together. I, I hope that you are watching this and listening to this sermon on your computer, but if you're doing so, it's probably by yourself. But it's rather that those early Christians were determined to proclaim to the world the good news of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, they did not stay in their homes, but went out into the world. And had they not done so, we might not have come to know about Jesus Christ and through him of God's love for us. And the message we need to take from their commitment is that when we get through all of this, when we are back to being a church more than in name, that we commit to carrying the good news of Jesus Christ and of how he represents in human form the love that God has for all the people of God, that we proclaim that to a world that still needs that same message. We would be following in good footsteps. We do not have to risk being thrown into the arena by a Caligula, we're safe. We may be spurned by a few with closed minds. 
but that there is no danger makes it even more important that we go forth proclaiming the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that through him we know God's love and we want all of God's children and all of the children in the world are God's children to know that love. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we pray today, I, 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 I do want to raise a, a, just a couple of names. I would like to raise the name of the, the sister and nephew of Barb Newman. Um, her nephew is, is, the last word was, was brain dead, was in a coma. Um, and I want to raise David Wirtz of the Coolidge Congregation, who is fighting quite a battle against cancer. So let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, as we come together virtually, as the, as the engineers and technicians tell us, let us not forget that we are indeed united, not only virtually, but in fact, because of our commitment as members of the Church of Jesus Christ. We know that we are physically separated, but the ties that bind us together are our faith in him and our knowledge of God's love. Oh God, as those who are tied together, we do raise praise of, prayers of concern this week and always. We, praise, we, we, we raise names of, of Rose and Pete and of all their family as, as Pete continues to do well. We raise the names of, of Bob and Doreen Stevens, of Mark and Connie Stevens. We raise Barb Newman and her sister and her nephew. We raise David Wirtz and his wife Lori and their children and indeed Howard and Julie and, and all of David's siblings. Oh God, there are many names we would raise if we knew of the needs. For we want everyone to know what we find in Jesus Christ, which is peace and joy, comfort, acceptance, abundance and justice things we want the whole world to know and share. But we know that will only come in your time and not in ours. And so we turn to the prayer that Jesus himself taught us as we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope that these few minutes that we spend virtually together will, will mean something to you and that you will know that you are not alone in this world. That not only are you accompanied by, by God in the form of Jesus, the Father, and the Father and the Holy Spirit, but there are tens of other fellow members of each of these churches who are with you. And so now go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace today and always. In Jesus' name, amen.